Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a video talking to you about this muzzle device here. Now you may have seen this muzzle device in a couple other videos, specifically one of them being the review I did on this Savage 10 FCP SR. Um, still have yet to replace the bottom metal, however I'm working on that. There's a company here locally in Oregon that makes replacement bottom metal, so hopefully we'll be able to work out something with them. If that happens, obviously I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, but today we're going to be focusing here on this muzzle device, which is the Heartbreaker uh, from Timber Creek Outdoors, which again is local here in Oregon. In fact, I did a video with them at SHOT Show this last year. I'm sure I'll be doing another one and hopefully I'll be doing a tour of their facility here soon uh, because the guys who actually own and operate Timber Creek Outdoors went to my high school so uh, we're, all, we're, all, we're all pretty local. Um, now this is actually one of the first things I bought from Timber Creek Outdoors. Um, I knew I needed a muzzle device or I should say I wanted a muzzle device for this rifle and uh, I thought you know what I've been meaning to try out Timber Creek. This is an excellent opportunity for me to do that and uh, get an idea of the kind of quality and um, I guess build craftsmanship, let's say, uh, of these products. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of the stats of this muzzle device here off to the side. Um, and one of the things you're probably gonna notice is uh, the weight. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and say right off the bat, the weight is a little bit of a downside. It's pretty heavy, um, however, that's really all I got as far as downsides to this. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just show you some footage of me shooting with this thing on this Savage 10 FCP, and then we'll talk a little bit more about my experiences with this and then kind of my overall feelings about this muzzle device. So one of the features that I really like about these muzzle devices is instead of using a traditional crush washer um, or even shims like a lot of muzzle devices use, this actually uses basically a locking nut. Now, I, I'm not by any means a long range precision shooting expert. Um, however, I, I, I read articles here and there, so I guess you could say I'm an internet expert, which means absolutely nothing. Um, but that said, from what I understand, the placement of your muzzle device can do a lot for the harmonics, especially once you start stretching out further distances, you're going to start noticing that. So what this lock washer allows you to do is actually move this muzzle device forward or backward, obviously making sure it's timed properly, but lets you, you move it quite a bit forward or backward and lock it into place without having to worry about, you know, stacking crush washers or getting a whole bunch of shims behind it. So that's a really cool option for those of you who are doing that long range precision stuff where you're really tuning up your load as well as tuning up your rifle for that load. Now, this is obviously designed as a break, hence the name Heartbreaker. And again, if you're not fully understanding why it's called the Heartbreaker, I'll show you some close-ups here of these side ports. It's kind of like a two-chamber break, and each of those chambers has got a little bit of a heart shape to it. Now, I thought, okay, that's kind of gimmicky, whatever. I doubt it's gonna work very well, or you know, it'll work moderately well. But I can say, honestly, again, shooting it on this rifle, it works surprisingly well. Uh, I can shoot this thing, and I have shot this thing, more or less all day long through uh, probably nearly 100 rounds in one outing, and my shoulder felt fine. Now, yeah, this, this rifle does have a pretty cushy um, um, stock or uh, shoulder pad, um, but even then, again, being on my shoulder all day long, I've had other rifles that just start to, start to wear on you. Um, this makes it very, very uh, pleasant to shoot, I should say. Now, obviously, um, this does have some ports up top. However, because I'm shooting it on a rest, uh, or off a bipod or off a rest whenever I'm shooting this. I don't experience a whole lot of muzzle climb because that recoil is pretty much just going straight back into the shoulder. Um, so it doesn't move around a lot. However, I would imagine if you're putting this on more of a semi-auto rifle, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend, but I'll get to that in a minute, um, this should help keep it pretty flat shooting. Now, 
but speaking of which, I can say whether I'm shooting at targets at 100 yards or at the steel targets up at 290, I can say as long as you know I got the uh, bipod uh, loaded properly and all that, with this muzzle device, I don't lose target acquisition between each shot, which is a really important thing, especially for competitors or people who need those rapid follow-up shots, even hunters, where, God forbid, you miss that first shot, you want a fast follow-up shot. As long as, again, you have it in a good rest or properly weighted, um, you're not gonna lose sight picture in between shots, which is really, really important and something I really like about this break versus just having the uh, factory uh, thread protector on there. Now, one of the big things that I know people are gonna wonder when it comes to uh, this muzzle device is does it uh, adversely affect accuracy? Well, as I mentioned before, you can tune it forward or backward and lock it into place to uh, try to time it properly and get your harmonics uh, good. Um, however, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you some of the groups that I shot just today. Again, if you go back and look at uh, the review I did of this rifle, maybe I had a uh, silencer on it, but I might have shown groups with this, but nonetheless, I have groups to show you today with this thing. Um, I already knew more or less what to expect with this thing because I've gotten sub MOA groups with this muzzle device before, but today I was shooting the 175 grain Fiocchi uh, Sierra Match Kings. This was my very first five shot group. My first round was high and it was sitting in the barrel pretty long before I pulled the trigger on it. So it could have just heated up the powder, made it burn a little faster and give it the little extra velocity to throw it up. But these last bottom four right here, which all uh, were consecutive, are probably about three quarters of an inch. I'll measure it when I get home and if it's not, if it's as near as makes no difference to three quarters, I won't make mention of it, but nonetheless. Um, and then over here, uh, this one's strung out more left to right, so I know that's me, uh, probably the way I was uh, pushing it against my um, shooting mat. But uh, again, I have one, the fifth shot opens it up to probably about an inch and a half. But with the Titus IV, we're again looking at three quarters of an inch, which for my shooting ability is more than acceptable. Uh, if, if you were a better shooter, you could probably uh, tighten up those groups a little bit more. Um, but again, for factory loaded Sierra Match Kings from Fioki and my ability to shoot, I am more than happy with those groups. Now again, just as a testament to this thing's ability to still shoot accurately with this muzzle device on, I'm gonna go ahead and cut in some footage from something I just did a couple minutes ago, uh, which is shoot at the small steel target that I have up at 290, uh, which is, well, it's 283, but with the incline effectively to uh, 290. Um, I hadn't done it with this rifle before, but I went three for three on that piece of steel with this muzzle device and uh, the 150 grain Fiocchi full metal jacket. So um, I, I, I couldn't, be happy about, couldn't be happier about that, but I'll go ahead and let you see that for yourself right now. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up because really, when it comes to muzzle devices, there's not usually a whole lot that I need to cover. More or less, just does it work? Um, and again, I really think this thing works. Now, again, one of the reasons I wanted to try it was because it was available locally. Um, if, <laughs> if you're comfortable with yourself enough, having hearts on the end of your gun isn't a bad thing. Um, the nice thing is too, uh, they are available in a couple, couple different color options. This is, I think they're uh, Parkerized black, but they also have a Cerakoted black as well as a cer uh, Cerakoted clear coat. So you still got kind of the raw metal look. Now, if you, if you contact them and you ask nicely, I wouldn't be surprised if they can do whatever color you want because they work very closely with some Cerakoters also in town. Uh, they might be able to give you a, you know, a fancy red or pink one for, for the ladies in your life uh, who might want hearts on their gun. Um, but again, some really good stuff. Again, from a company here locally, which is a huge deal for me. I like supporting Oregon companies as much as I possibly can. And again, people you can't get much closer to home than people who went to your same high school. Um, so with all that said, uh, for under, uh, well under 100 bucks for one of these, I think it's un even under 70 bucks if I remember correctly. 
You guys are going to be hard pressed to find something much better again in that price range. Again, now as I mentioned earlier, this isn't something I would put on a semi-auto gun just because it is pretty heavy, um, at least to me. Totally subjective. I think it's pretty heavy as far as muzzle devices go. So if you're doing it on a gun, like say a SCAR 17 or even an AR-10 with a long barrel, having that weight way out there in the front, you're definitely going to feel it. So maybe again, keep it on more of the bench rest style rifles as opposed to your semi-auto hike through the woods type rifles. But then again, if uh, if you're someone who isn't as weight sensitive, then by all means, go ahead and try it out. I, I, I think you're gonna be happy with it nonetheless. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and throw those in the comment section down below. I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. If you guys are interested, I also have a Patreon page where I post all my videos up early as well as show some exclusive content there. But again, do with that information what you will. But anyway, as always, I hope you're able to get something out of this video and I really appreciate you watching.